Hi, I'm Liz with Liz's Crafts, and today we will be making a paper frog with a card, and this is for someone's birthday. So the first thing I did was I went into design space and I picked out the card that I wanted to create. And since I don't have the scoring um, tool, I went in to customize and I removed all the scoring lines from the project. And I'm just using my, my um, bone there to fold my card in half and to get a crisp line. And I've cut all my pieces out. And I'm just going to start layering them. And I'm just using some old cardstock that I've had because I used to do scrapbooking. And then I have this these foam pieces. Uh, this roll here I got from uh, the Dollar Tree in the section that has the hooks and all. You know, kind of over by the car section in my store anyway. So I'm just putting those wherever I think they need to go. You do want it on the majority of your card there. So it's not going to cave in. So this was a card that was already on Design Space. Like I said, I just uh, pulled it up and then I went to Customize. I removed the dotted lines where the scoring would be because I do not have the scoring wheel. But I did order one. I think it should be coming in this week. I got it off of Amazon. And after it comes in and I use it a few times, then I will add it to my description box. Because I do like to use the items I get from Amazon first before I put them put links in the description box for you. Because if I don't like an item, then I'm not going to put it in the description box for you. So these little tiny squares I also got at the Dollar Tree, but they were in the crafter square section and you do get uh, two, um, two little pads of the squares and they do come in very handy. So I do recommend the, these little squares here from the crafter section and the larger rectangles from the uh, picture hanging section. So as you can see, I'm, I'm using quite a bit of uh, the foam pieces all over this card because I don't want it to cave in. And you want to especially get around the sides. And that's where these little tiny ones come in handy for sure. They're just the right size. I did want you to see exactly where I'm placing these. So in case you want to do a card like this, you will know where you should put pieces. Like I say, I put it all over the card. Now I'm just removing the backing from the foam pieces. And I did speed this up so you wouldn't have to watch it and I deleted some of it. So I'm just going to add this to the front part of the card. So 
So I thought this year I would make paper crafts for my immediate family for their birthdays. So this one is, I don't think she watches my videos. So anyway, this one's a card for my daughter-in-law. And then the frog, she likes frogs. So uh, you'll see the frog in a little while. And I hope she likes it. So her birthday's in February. So I thought I would get a head start. I'm really liking these uh, paper crafts. So if you haven't tried them, you might want to try them. I did a 3D unicorn pop-up out of a card for my granddaughter who's seven. She loves unicorns. I did not tape it or anything like that, but it turned out really good. And it is also in design space. So now you're just putting the white overlay on top of that green there. Now I think in the design space, it didn't say anything about putting the foam pieces on this particular card. You just glue it down, but I wanted mine to pop a little bit and have dimensions, so that's why I'm adding it. Now on the white part, you can't really put foam dots on it. So I'm just using my double-sided tape around the edges. So that a darker green, you could just tape it or glue it onto the lighter green portion of the card if you want to if you don't want to put the foam dots on. I just particularly like the uh, dimension the foam dots give. So I did mine with the foam. And I believe um, the Dollar Tree does have the double-sided tape in the crafter, crafter Square portion of the store. Uh, this is just some double-sided tape that I had back when I was doing um, scrapbooking and cards and stuff. So I'm just trying to use up stuff that I have. And if you like what you see here, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It just lets YouTube know that um, people like my videos. So I'm just putting this white over top of the green here. You want to line it up, so um, line up the edges. And you'll see in a minute where I turn the card around and line it up a little bit better. Here we go. So I figured that's probably the best way to do it. That's where I have my best results.
Now here I use some glue stick and um, I try to glue some of the pieces down that are kind of sticking up. Um, this glue stick didn't work too well. So um, either use a better glue stick or you can use that clear liquid Elmer's glue that I normally use. That would probably be a better choice. This particular glue stick just did not want to work with this, but I kept going with it. And if you're watching my channel for the first time, thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed and you like what you see here, please feel free to subscribe. Now we're going to work on the envelope. So again, I do not have the scoring wheel for my Cricut. So I'm going to use this scoring tool that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I just go over it a couple times and then I fold it back and you can see. So if you want to make some of these cards and you don't have a scoring wheel, no fear. You just make sure you delete, you customize your design and you delete those scoring lines on your project in uh, Design Space. Because when I first uh, was going to make something, I didn't make it because I thought I had to have the scoring wheel and I didn't know how to, you know, take out the scoring lines, but I figured it out and I took care of that. Now this is the flap to the envelope and um, yeah, I'm not quite sure that I have this in the right place. So um, I'm going to try to figure that out in a little bit here and then we will get it taped down to the correct position. Now I did these in two different green colors, but you could do it in the same color. Now it does have a fold line on it, so I'm just trying to measure it here to figure out where I need to fold it. And then I think in a minute here, I just pull it out and put a fold line where I think it should be. <laughs> figure it out. So when I do my scoring lines, I do put the metal ruler down and then I go over it with my tool a couple times and then I fold it. I'm still trying to figure out how to put this on. I figure it out eventually. I'm like, ooh, that's not going to work. But there we go. This is the way it goes. So it's the flap on the envelope. So those are the sides that go down. So you need to put that on there. But actually, yes, the flap gets taped on the inside of the envelope. So we need to put some tape around that part of the flap. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get this backing off of the, the two-sided tape, but you eventually get it. Just got to work it. And 
And if you know other people that might like this type of video, please um, feel free to share my videos with them, your family and your friends. And if you guys make any of these projects, let me know and let me know how it turned out. I do have a Facebook page called Liz's Crafts and uh, I have a uh, Facebook group that's called Liz's Craft Friends and that's where you can share pictures of crafts that you have made. Okay, we're going to get this put together one way or another. We're going to do this. Now, for the inside of the card, I'm probably going to do some searches on birthday wishes for cards. And I'll print something up on some regular printer paper and tape that to the inside of the card. So I'm going to continue making the envelope. I think it's really cool that um, Design Space has the cards with the envelopes. So you don't have to worry about getting one the right size. They just show you how to make your own. Pretty cool. There we got one side of the envelope completed. Just going to do the same thing to the other side. And now what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of tape on the flap in case once you get the card in there and you go to give it to the person that um, you can seal it up. So for that piece of tape, you don't want to remove the backing. You want to leave it on until you go to give the card to the person. And here it is right here. So I'm just going to put a little piece on the flap. Now we have to um, glue those two pieces together, or actually tape it. I'm going to tape those two pieces together. So I'm going to put the tape all around all four edges of the white piece of the card. We're just going to fold it over, press it down, and the card is ready for whatever you're going to put on the inside of it. There's a close up. And there it is. Doesn't that look nice? Much better than a card you could buy at the store. So now we're going to move on to the frog. So I've cut all my pieces out of design space. I did have to go in and remove any scoring. And I think there was just one on uh, that white piece of the uh, frog there where I'm putting these other white pieces. So you line up these white pieces with where the score line should be. And each white piece gets smaller and smaller. So I'm just using the double-sided tape along the bottom edge 
of these white pieces and adding them to the underside of the frog. So this is the side that's going to be seen. So if there's like some um, texture on it, that, that's the side you're going to apply these pieces to. There's the scoring right there. So we have our tape on and now we want to add our foam pieces in between each of those pieces that we just put on. Now I have to say these 3D um, paper crafts are uh, a little time consuming, but I think they're worth doing because the end product is just kind of amazing. You're like, this is paper. It's kind of cool what you can do with paper. And especially if it's paper that you've had for years and you're like, what am I going to do with this? Because I have like three drawers full of scrapbooking paper and these are big drawers too. These are not your little teeny skinny drawers. These are big drawers. So I'm just happy to be using up some of my scrapbooking paper. Of course I had to go out and buy some white and black scrapbooking paper because you know you use that the most. And I was surprised to see that the Dollar Tree has three sheets of the black in a package and three sheets of the white in a package, of course, for $1.25. However, it might be cheaper to get it at um, Hobby Lobby when they have their scrapbook and paper for 25 cents a sheet because then you would get five sheets instead of three. But I didn't go to Hobby Lobby. I just went to the Dollar Tree. So I just went ahead and bought them. So here's another piece of the frog. We're going to add these legs to it. So for the bottom part of the frog, they want you just to use the uh, double-sided tape. So it's going to be kind of flat. And then for the upper part of the frog, that's where you use the foam pieces. Just using the little tiny squares on the upper leg. And then you want to position this correctly on top of the piece there. And then you want to do the same thing to the other side. This, now this frog has a lot of cutout pieces, but I think he turned out so cute and I think my daughter-in-law will love it. She does like frogs. So each time we go to a new layer, we're just going to use the um, double-sided tape for the bottom part and then the foam for the upper part.
So let me know if uh, you might try something like this. I think it's pretty cool the um, people that think of these to design. I mean, how do they do that? I could never think up how to do this. This portion of the frog has little spiky things along his sides that kind of stick out a little bit. Right there was a little piece of the yellow paper that was stuck there, so I pulled that off. This is one of those little um, red-eyed, orange-toed tree frogs. He has a lot of layers. So we're done with this portion of it and we've we're done with that white portion and now we're going to work on his body. So we have these layers for his body. Just going to lay them out. As you can see, they get smaller and smaller. So you want to make sure you put your foam on the smaller piece as you put them together. So you want to line it up so that the bottom piece um, is, you know, outside of the piece that you're adding on to it so you can see it. I think this piece here, I eventually go back and add another foam piece to it. Gonna add these two little squares to the eyes. And 
Now we go on to this more intricate piece. Well, I did get this piece on a little crooked, so I need to straighten it up a bit. So here is where I think I add, okay, I add uh, the little squares to the eyes of that one piece that I didn't put it on. So it was kind of flapping around, so I wanted to uh, elevate that a little bit. There we go. Now this piece, since it's so intricate like that, I um, use my liquid glue on uh, the part that's cut out, and then I use a, I cut one of those uh, bigger squares or rectangles in half for the eyes. I'm gonna have to get me some more of this Elmer's liquid clear glue like this because um, the tip on it is really good so you can um, put it on little thin pieces and uh, I'm almost out of it so I really need to go get some more of it it's pretty good and I have no idea where it came from so I'm gonna have to figure that out too So I just kind of put it on the whole piece except for the eyes. The eyes have the foam pieces on it. And there's his body all ready to go. We're going to set that aside and then we're going to work on uh, pieces of his legs here. Again, I'm going to have to use the liquid glue because these um, are intricately cut. These go on his legs, his lower legs, and his upper legs. So these larger pieces are for his lower legs, and then the smaller two pieces are for his upper legs. So I'm just going to do the same thing to the other three pieces. And now we're going to work on his eyes. So there's several layers to the eyes, but we want to use the foam for it. Just going to take it a layer at a time using the foam as we go along. We cut some of it down as we need smaller pieces.
Now for the uh, red part of the eye, since it's so small, I'm just going to use the liquid glue to glue those onto the black pieces. And then I'll use the foam on the black pieces to put them on the other piece that we just finished putting together. So those two of these red pieces look like moon shapes to each of the black pupils, I guess they are. So you want to put one on either side of the eye. Then you're going to add one of the little foam squares to the back of it. There we go, one eye is complete. Now we're gonna do the next one. And then once we get this eye complete, then we can put our little tree frog together. And he turns out so cute. So we're going to put some foam pieces on the back of these uh, parts that get on the legs. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. On the back part of the legs, we're just using the double-sided tape. The front legs will use the foam. We'll do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll put our foam pieces on the uh, upper part of the leg. I think the hardest thing with these foam pieces is just getting the backing off. So you want to line it up so that it fits on there correctly. Then we want to add his body on there. So we're going to do it with the foam. Well, we're going to do the bottom part with the um, double-sided tape, and we'll do the top part with the foam. You want to make sure you line up that bottom piece there. And then we can add our foam pieces in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off of these pieces and then slide it up under in between the two, the two pieces there.
There we go. Now we need to add his eyes on. Or I might be putting these in between where the eyes are or should go. Oh, no, we're going to add the eyes. You want to make sure the uh, black slits go up and down. You don't want them to go crosswise. He's so cute. And now we need to add the white portion, his underbody there. So again, we're just going to use a double-sided tape on the back legs. And I'm adding some double-sided tape on his front legs. I think he turned out really cute. What do you guys think? So I think this is where I add another foam piece to his body. It's on that green piece that I had just put one foam piece on. So I should have known better than to put just one piece on there. But there he is he's so cute with his little orange toes and his red eyes i hope she likes him there he is tree frog so cute i'm not sure what you're supposed to do with that part but i, I don't know but there he is. I think he turned out great. Let me know what you think in the comments. And there's the card with the envelope and the frog that she's going to get for her birthday. And again, I'm Liz with Liz's Crafts. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up. And if you know others that would like to see my projects, please share my videos with them. And I'll see you in the next one.